In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewers' question, which is how to create a stacked bar chart with data sets stacked on top of each other with multiple colors when the data reaches a certain threshold in Chart.js. So this was a question from one of the viewers who watches one of my other videos, which was related to how to add a rounded border on a single data in a donut chart. So in here, if you scroll a bit down, you can see here Tudor Plus. And first of all, a special thank you for Tudor Plus for asking the question. And this is what following what the question was. Hi, is it possible to use JavaScript and get similar results to a stack bars, uh, bars chart, stack bar chart, sorry. As you know, a stack bar chart uses multiple data sets in order to stack on top of each other. Would like to know or would like to see a single data set stack on top of each other with multiple colors when the data reaches a certain threshold. For example, 0 to 40, red, 41 to 70, green, and from 71 to 100 green as well. Well, I assume that this will probably be yellow or orange, so like a traffic light color. All right, yes, of course we can do that. Let's start to explore how. First of all, let's start and build our chart yes, or our bar chart. So I'm going to go to chart yes version 3.3.2, which is the latest one. And here we just get the default settings here. So once I copy this, I'm going back here and then I just put paste it all in here. All right, give it a proper indentation. And afterwards, oh, let me just move this slightly more so we have a bit more space, that's better. So afterwards, what I want to do here is I want to click on getting started, click on getting started submenu and get the JavaScript library for chart.js. Copy that, paste it just below here. So we have these here together, that's done. Now I want to remove this. No need for this, and I'm going to nest it in a div with a class of chartbox. So chartbox, and in here, this well, all right. So here I will just make a style tag, and the reason I'm doing this style tag here is for the chartbox. It's to avoid that this my chart or the canvas will grow into infinity. So we say here a fixed width of 700 pixels. It's more than enough. Let's save that. Put in here some enters, save this, refresh, and there we are. So now we have our first part here. So what we want to do now is we want to stack it. So how do we stack a bar chart? Simply here in the scales. What we need to do in the scales here, we're going to create an X scale, indicating that we're going to stack this. And this is a quick note. There are two ways to do this. I'm going to show you the easy way first. And then in the next video, I will show you the more complicated way, which goes deeper into arrays. So let's start and do this one. And here, what we're going to say here is stacked. And this we say true. Once we have that, make sure you have a comma here. This one here will be as well stacked, but this will be set on false. And this is the reason I'm doing that is because we're using the simple way. If you're going to use the hard way, this is not a option. Yes. And next video, I will show you that one. And I will explain as well why. What will be the difference? You will see it later on once we set the result. So let's remove some of these border colors here right now because eventually this will be just, it will not be an array, it will just be one single color because we have one value every item here. So what we're going to do here, remove all of this, remove this one as well. Uh, all right, so we have this here. The next thing what I want to do is I want to copy this data set. I want to add another data set to stack it up. And let's assume we have four data points. I'll just call this one, number two, three, and four. All right, so if I save this now and refresh, we have these, but they are all, as you can see, they're all within each other. So what's the difference? You might say, well, what's the difference? But because of the false here. So we say it's set on true. If I save this, you can see now they're being stacked nicely. But the other one, they're not really being stacked, they're behind each other. However, the stacking effect here is slightly different. Let's remove this and just, go, just put it on uh, two values only. Then you will understand far better what, why or how it affects each other and how they respond to each other. All right, so let's give this here. We're going to assume that this will be the lowest value. And then afterwards, what we're going to do is we're going to do it on top of each other. So let's say this would be... Um, uh, let's say normally this will be five 
if you would say here as well 5. So what we need to do here is we do 12 plus 5 will be 17. And this one, 19 plus 5 will be 24. And then here, same story. Imagine here we'll have 3, and this one will be 4. What we're going to do here is, oh, um, we need to have higher values here, sorry. But let's say this would be 50, or what is that? Or 30, just to make sure that we have these color codes. And here this will be 30 again, and it'll probably hit around the 70 and the 80 points, and this will be somewhere in the yellow. All right, so then we say here 17 plus 30 is 47. And then we have 24 plus that is 54. And after that here, this will be 84. And this one will be 77. All right, so if I save this now and refresh, you can see here they're on top of each other. Or, well, now they are, uh, did I set this on true? Or they're stacked? So this I set on false now. So they will not stack in a vertical position so basically they're just behind each other as you can see this is the reason why i'm indicating as well why you could use uh, colors but they will overlap each other after a while although this effect is to be honest quite appealing as well so here we're going to set up the color i'm going to remove these options here uh, let's remove this and this would be probably maybe product sales or something in product one and then this one will be product two save that there we are so we have two products and we want to see here what's the average sales or whatever there is well i guess the sales doesn't make sense on this but there we are all right so let's start to focus here to do this here we're going to work with some of these nice functions here that we have so what you need to know is this because you're asking can we use javascript with that yes we can how do i know how you might say as okay how do i know i can use javascript to to do a function in here well let me show you um if we go down here we're going to look at background color border color and we have background color i saw somewhere as well that should be here. So, oh, sorry let's see this one here when you see this in the in the uh documentation you can see indexable and scriptable this is what you need to know scriptable means you can use a script to give it a function a nameless function where you can start to play around with it so yes it is possible because of this magic word here for the border color same as well it's indexable and scriptable so indexable means there's an array value possible so you could do basically outside here make a function and push push the value every time in depending on but i'm going to just do it directly in here and that will be fun as well because it's slightly different that's not really what i Who's outside of the uh, of the canvas or the chart? So now we just do it inside. That will be fun as well. All right, in here, put in a function. This function must have the context value. Why context? This is very important. Context refers back to this here. Context means draw something. This here means basically draw something in the canvas. What are you going to draw? All of these codes here. All of this so the context is basically the canvas with every data point in here so what are the data points well all of these here so we can just refer to that we have this one now all right so here we have to do the following and this is the one that was that's quite hard to find well, once you understand this you you can go far more deeper and this becomes fun all right in here we're going to create a very straightforward if statement and the if statement is very straightforward and simple which is this oh i realize that here maybe we need to push a value let's remove this one for now i think that will be probably better let's remove all of this because uh then we we have to probably push a value and i don't want to make it too complicated for now so we have this here so we have this single value let me just save this here go back here refresh all right that's fine there's only product one one value only nothing nothing special to say fair enough let's continue so here in the if statement the if statement is straightforward we're going to get this data point here so how do we get this data point? well we we can do here from my chart in this but that's not possible if you if you are declaring a variable here and then you say here my chart then you get an error why because you already you are declaring it here and it didn't even complete it here yet that's why normally if you use my chart you have to be outside of the function so now we're just going to use the context we say got the context in this context we say chart which means in this context here it's in this current position here in the chart and then we can say here data 
and we said done data sets. And here, this you would say, well, okay, here and put zero. No, let's soft code this because we need to soft code this eventually. How do we do this? Go back here. Then we go to the general, if I'm not mistaken, the options. All right. Scroll down here. And you can find here the following. And these are the magic words here eventually to use. Um, let's go down more. Let's go down more. Let's search for this. All right. Here we are. The data set at index. This is what, what we need. The data set, uh, the data, sorry, the data set index. Yeah, I need to watch out what I'm saying. So apologies. A data set index index of the current data set fair enough this is the one i need so i'm going to copy this this will get this value here but here of course we need to copy context and then press dot all right that's number one then we are not done yet because then we need to go we have now this we understand which index we are which is zero here will be two but this is of course now soft coded so it will be automated and then we go here into the data and the data here is just the first value in our case. I say dot data, and then here we need to do almost similar, except we get the context again, except this is the data set. What is it? Probably data index. Let's double check. There you are, data index. Index of the current data. All right, and this is index of the current data set. Data set and data. These two, these two are going together, hand in hand. All right, we've got this now. And now we can say, because basically if we have this, we could even do here a, uh, I'll do it later on, I will show you. We will make a uh, console log value. So here, now we get this, and then we say here, uh, if, sorry, we need to make this, then we say if this data point or this data is smaller than, let me double check what was the desired value, smaller than 40, in that case, we say return red, meaning that we want to get the background color red. So let's double check here and copy this and see how this eventually works. And then what I want to do here, console.log, so we can double check if we really get the value as I desire to get. So once I have this here, I can remove this because this should not be here. And comma, save that. Refresh. All right, there's something going on here. We have a tiny error. So it doesn't grab the color here. Return this. Let's check if this is true. This is true. It should be red. Um, well, let's double check here if I got everything correctly because there's a few more things that we need to work on. Of course, it's on the, the other colors as well. Uh, let's double check. All right, so after some testing, I realized the mistake. I thought it was somewhere in our codes. No, it was here. I had to do background color, of course, to command this background color with capital C, and I only had a background, so sorry about that. Save this, refresh. Now you can see we have the first one, all right? So we can use this now, and then if we even, do we have the console log? Oh, the console log, for some reason, doesn't want to show at all. I'll put it here up, maybe we'll show. There we are, value 12. So it's multiple times, but that's fine. It doesn't matter so much. So we have this, and this is the most important part. So if we have the one in red, basically we can do multiple times. So I would not recommend an if, if else statement. I would just say here, basically do this. And this could be even shortened, but for now that's all right. So what we can do here is the following. This will be yellow if it is larger or equal to 40 and this will be green if it's larger or equal to 70 or 71 if I'm not mistaken we can say 70 it doesn't matter so much all right if I save this now and I can copy this entire chunk of code here there we are copy this now we put in here the background color another one so and here again and there again, basically if we can do a function, we loop it through, it would make more sense, but that's all right for now. So what happened here, I see here, this is yellow, did I adjust it to green? Return green, we can return yellow. And I'll probably have to force this one here, I guess 
that's what we can do here is maybe not this we say this and we need to do an end statement here or between so i'm going to just quickly check for an if statement between well i realize that basically we don't have to do the between if we just do it like this it will make sense as well we say if it's below 70 because basically this one protects it already because the issue here was if the value is above 40 anything it will become yellow then after it will ignore this one for some reason so what we want to do here is we just say if everything is below 70 it becomes yellow and what will and then you might wonder what will happen with the other one well it probably will become red then let's double check if this really works all right let's try this here you can see if this is not interfering with the red No, there you are. So this is basically how it works. Now you have this, these colors and this design. You could even do it in a horizontal. I think a horizontal would be even interesting or more interesting here. What you could do here is the following then. Go in here and go to the chart type. Go to bar type and then go to where is that one index access if I'm not mistaken. I'm not sure something was indexed. Yeah, oh, there we are. I just saw it index axis by default it's set on x you can convert it to y but for now this is basically the, the way to do it but if you would do this to y this is a fair share of weight, but at least make sure you are aware of that because of my uh, design here is a stack we need to switch these as well because here the stack will be now converted to a y comma refresh and now of course you have like these floating bars style this is basically a um, what you could call it a uh, uh, there was a specific term for that I just forgot it so I put this on false and then put in true uh, oh yeah that's the one a Gantt chart the other one looks like a Gantt chart basically and this here with this now you convert it as well and then we can probably adjust as well the border colors with the same structure of this this could be in here but I would say to things or else you just remove the border color because you have a solid color anyway since we have a solid color but this is the reason why you must use solid color only because without if you make a transparent color it will overlap each other but with this you have the way to do it and there you are this is the one i would say remove the grid lines as well it will make it probably the more more appealing one but this is how you can do it with a color coding and if we would change the color here and that's also a structure here. This here is really dependent on a built on. So this is, this might not always be possible if you have a hard coded data set. This is not the option. If you don't have a, or, or if you have no access in controlling how you want to use the data or how to set the data because you get it from the outside and maybe they don't have it like incremental, but they have like only five and this is the differences and they, and you want to really stack on them. You need to look at part two of the video where I really go for the more advanced version where we analyze the data because we need to analyze the data consistently. However, this if you can do it like this, I would recommend to do it like this. It's the easiest one. Thank you for watching this video and I hope you enjoy it. And if you enjoy this video, you probably will enjoy this one as well. And if you're interested in Chart.js, check out in the description box the link directing to my Chart.js course where you can learn everything about Chart.js. And finally, of course, make sure you subscribe to my channel.